All right, good afternoon. We'd like to welcome all of you out. Again, Colorado Fallen Officers Memorial. And at this time, we ask that you please stand. Oh, we'll see got the colors, followed by the national anthem and the Pledge of Allegiance. may be seated. Welcome, family and friends and distinguished guests. Thank you for joining us today as we pause to honor those who paid the ultimate price to serve and protect us. In 1961, then President John F. Kennedy directed that May 15th, be set aside as Law Enforcement Officer Memorial Day to ensure that the commitment, dedication, and sacrifice made by fallen officers would never be forgotten. Each year, a national memorial service is held in Washington to honor law enforcement officers who have fallen nationwide. It is not possible for many law enforcement officers nor their families to attend the ceremonies in Washington, D.C. So the Wadlaw Public Safety Chaplains, along with chaplains from our neighboring agencies, want to welcome you to the 28th Annual 
law enforcement officer of Memorial Day service. We gather this afternoon to recognize, to remember, to honor all women and men in law enforcement who have laid down their lives in the line of duty in the year 2023. We want to pause and honor those who paid the ultimate price to serve and protect us. We pay our deepest respects to all those men and women and their families and express our gratitude for the ultimate sacrifice they have made on our behalf. We also recognize the surviving loved ones of those fallen officers and pray that they and their sacrifice will not soon be forgotten. As we get ready to remember this day, would you please pray with me? Almighty God, we come to you this afternoon in recognition that men and women across the country and in our own backyard have laid down their life following their calling as law enforcement officers. These officers have served with dignity and honor and paid the ultimate sacrifice. He once said, greater love has no man than this that he laid down his life for a friend. To lay down one's life in the call of their vocation is a great honor. And we honor them. And so as we remember them, we pray that this time will draw us into deep reflection for those that serve us so well. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite Mayor Joan Peck forward to read the proclamation. This is a proclamation designating the week of May 12th through the 18th, 2024, as National Police Week, and further designating May 15th, 2024, as Peace Officers Memorial Day in Longmont, Colorado. Whereas the Congress and President of the United States have designated May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day, and the week in which it falls as National Police Week. And whereas the members of the Longmont Police Department play, and is, play an essential role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of the residents of Longmont, Colorado, and whereas it is important that all citizens know and understand the duties, responsibilities, hazards, and sacrifices of their law enforcement agency who serve the people by safeguarding life and property, by protecting them against violence and disorder, and by protecting the innocent against deception and the weak against oppression. And whereas the Northern Colorado Regional Peace Officers Memorial Service will be held at 4.30 p.m. on May 15, 2024 at the Longmont Civic Center Interior Mall. Now therefore, I, Joan Peck, Mayor, by virtue of the authority vested in me, and the City Council of the City of Longmont call upon all the residents of Longmont to observe the week of May 12th through the 18th, 2024, as National Police Week, commemorating law enforcement officers past and present who have rendered a dedicated service to the communities and in so doing have established for themselves an enviable and enduring reputation for, for preserving the rights and security of all citizens. I further call upon all residents of Longmont to observe Wednesday, May 15, 2024, as Peace Officers Memorial Day, in honor of those law enforcement officers who through their courageous deeds have made the ultimate sacrifice in serving their community or have become disabled in the performance of duty and let us recognize and pay respect to the survivors of our fallen heroes. Thank you. 
As you look around the room, you'll see QR codes on the walls. Please feel free to use those to follow along in today's program. End of watch. I'm the police, and I'm here to arrest you. You've broken the law. I did not write the law. I may even disagree with the law, but I will enforce it. No matter how you plead, cajole, beg, or attempt to stir my sympathies, nothing you do will stop me from placing you in a steel cage with gray bars. If you run away, I will chase you. If you fight me, I will fight back. If you shoot at me, I will shoot back. By law, I am unable to walk away. I'm a consequence. I am the unpaid bill. I am fate with a badge and a gun. Behind my badge is a heart like yours. I bleed, I think, I love, and yes, I can be killed. And although I'm but one man, I have thousands of brothers and sisters who are the same as me. They will lay down their lives for me, and I them. We stand watch together, a thin blue line, protecting the prey from the predators, the good from the bad, we are the police. The thin blue line. There is a thin blue line which runs through the center of darkness. The darkness represents the evil in this world. The thin blue line represents our peacekeepers. The line is representative of the brotherhood and sisterhood of warriors a few good men and women amongst a sea of darkness. The line that stands between good and evil, the barrier that serves those in need and protects them from the evil amongst us. It is thin because few dare to stand it, outnumbered but united. A line that will not falter in the wake of the enemy, a line of protection for those in need. In 2023, across our nation, we lost 135 law enforcement officers. We want to recognize their service and ultimately their sacrifices as we remember the families and friends that they left behind. We want to pause specifically to honor the four officers who ended their watch on the state of Colorado. We will light a candle to remember each and to pause to honor their service. Sergeant Michael Moran, Cortez Police Department, end of watch, Wednesday, November 29th, 2023. <laughs> Community Parole Officer Christine Karen Sandoval. Colorado Department of Corrections. End of watch, September 28, 2023. Police Officer Julian Becerra. Fountain Police Department and the watch Saturday, February 11th, 2023. Airman Trinity Leanne Reinhardt, United States. States Air Force Security Forces, and the watch September 16th, 2023. 
as we watch these burning candles up here throughout the rest of the ceremony, remember those that stood in the line of fire for us. We'll be reading the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He causes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even when I walk in the valley of darkness, I'll fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You set a table before me in the presence of my adversaries. You anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. May only goodness and kindness pursue me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord for length of days. Salmo 23. El Señor es mi pastor, y nada me falta. En verdes pastos me hace descansar. Junto a tranquilas aguas me conduce, me infunde nuevas fuerzas, me guía por sendas de justicia, haciendo honor a su nombre. Aun si voy por valles tenebrosos, no temeré ningún mal, porque tú estás a mi lado. Tu vara y tu bastón me reconfortan. Dispones ante mí un banquete en presencia de mis enemigos. Has ungido con aceite mi cabeza, has llenado mi copa a rebosar. Seguro estoy de que la bondad y el amor me seguirán todos los días de mi vida. Y en la casa del Señor habitaré para siempre. Morlet abid Adonai rolech zar bin of teshri abit segi Amei minuchok in haledi nafshi yishok yam cheli Remag li tzedek deman shemau kam ki hukets on my back Lo ira rak yata imadi Shitecha mshantecha imai nachmoni Tarok lepan aishocha negle tzare shanta b'shamer rishi kai shivaya We'd now like to invite Chief Satter to the podium. So welcome to our guests, our friends, our colleagues. I'm Jeff Satter, Chief of Police for the Walmart Police Department. Um, before I get too far, I want to express my gratitude to the chaplains, Park Range chaplains, to our police liaisons, to our honor guard for putting this event together today and for 25 to 28 years. So they have always been here for us and we appreciate it. Also want to thank our mayor, Joan Peck, our city manager, Harold Dominguez, uh, Judge Robert Frick, uh, Eugene May for also coming and, and attending today, and then our council member, Susie Hildago, and uh, Shakita Yarborough. Again, thank you for joining us today. We are so grateful for all the support of our partnership with our colleagues at the Boulder District Attorney's Office, Boulder County Sheriff's Office, the Boulder Police Department, me, Police Department. Uh, we've had strong relationships with these agencies for as long as I can remember. And uh, it's getting harder to remember going back to when I first started. But uh, today I'm here to talk about connections. So before I start, I just, as we gather, I want to remember uh, that just recently we've had some horrific events around this, the country. I want to acknowledge these recent tragedies. One of them was in Charlotte, Mecklenburg on April 30th. Four officers were killed and four officers were injured at one event that day. 
The day before in Kenner, Louisiana, three officers were shot and injured. And it serves as a stark reminder of the dangers that our law enforcement officers face each day as they bravely serve and protect our neighborhoods and our communities. Sadly, our profession has already lost 58 officers this year, approximately 25 of them from violence, some of them from car wrecks, some of them from heart attacks. Um, so there's some of those things going on. I just got back from Moab, Utah, just lost an officer who was killed when a semi, uh, drove a semi in an officer's car and killed him. He was a father with two children. That was uh, Sunday. In moments like these, we're reminded of the deep connections that bind us all together. Is the ties of compassion, the solidarity, and resilience that unite us as a community offering support and comfort in times of sorrow and loss. And nowhere are these connections more profound than within our law enforcement family. I want to include our fire family too. For those that wear the badge, serving is not just a job. It's a calling rooted in commitment to uphold the principles of justice, integrity, and compassion. Every day, these individuals don their uniforms, ready to face the challenges and dangers that come their way, and they are determined to keep our neighborhood safe and secure. Yet, as we remember those we have lost, we are reminded of the inherent risks that come with our jobs. Our officers and deputies confront danger with courage, facing threats that many of us can scarcely comprehend all in the name of protecting others. It is in these moments that the true spirit shines, illuminating the darkness with unwavering resolve and strength. As we honor the memory of our fallen heroes and reflect on the recent tragedies, let us also draw inspiration from the legacies they leave behind, their bravery, their sacrifices, an unwavering dedication to serve as a source of hope and encouragement for all of us. They teach us that even in the face of fear and uncertainty, we can find strength in our shared values, honor, duty, and service. So I, Mike Doherty, I just see in the back there, I apologize if I missed you earlier. Mike Doherty from the DA's office is here also. So, uh, I have a verse from church or a song at church that I like. It's called uh, Here I Am, Lord. I was planning on trying to sing it to Harley there. <laughs> Harley, that was incredible. That was, she's one of our core uh, clinicians, if you don't know her, uh, Harley Whiteley. Uh, incredible crew that we have for our police service, and apparently she has some talent. That it, it, it was amazing. So I'm probably not going to sing, but if I break out into two, uh, I'm, I'm going to do my best. So uh, the song is Here I Am, Lord. I'm not sure if you've ever heard it, uh, but I, I think it, the verses help guide you as an officer. So here it goes. I don't think I'll say it. Here I am, Lord. It is I, Lord. I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you leave me. I will hold your people in my heart. These words echo the sentiments of every law enforcement officer who has ever answered the call of duty, who has ever stood for justice, and who has ever sacrificed for the greater good. They remind us that true heroism lies in the absence of fear, not in the absence of fear, but in courage to face it to embrace it and to overcome it for the sake of others. So let us honor the memory of our fallen heroes, not just with words, but with actions. Let us pledge to carry their legacy forward, to uphold their values for which they so bravely stood, and to never forget the sacrifices they made in the service of our communities. May their courage inspire us, may their memory guide us, 
may their spirit forever live in our hearts. Please remember Sergeant Mike Moran, Community Patrol Officer Christine Gruden Sandoval, Airman Trinity Leanne Reinhardt, and Police Officer Julian Bersero. Thank you for all coming today. Uh, I'm very honored by everybody's presence. Thank you, Chief. Romans 13, 4 through 5 says this. For one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath, to bring punishment to the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. And I want to read this to you also in the tra message translation. It says, the police aren't just here to be admired in their uniforms. God has an interest in keeping order and uses them to do it. That's why you must live responsibly, but not just to avoid punishment, also because it is the right way to live. And as cliche as it may sound to you all and to those who serve, um, I want you to know that this job is truly a calling. As civilians, we are called to live responsibly, but you and our, those who are in law enforcement are called not only to also live responsibly, but to be responsible for those that uh, the rest of us who are living the way um, that is less than responsible, if you will. You are entrusted with not only your own well-being, but those who are around you, you are avengers of peace. You've been called into this role as protectors and of those of justice. And so while we as civilians choose to do what is right, we, your chaplains, will continue to support you as you protect what is right, because that is what you have been called to do. I'm going to invite up Chief Steve Reverend. Good afternoon. My name is Stephen Redfern and I have the honor of being the Interim Police Chief at the Boulder Police Department. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today to, not, to say a few words while we honor our fallen heroes. Since coming to Boulder in 2021, I've consistently been impressed and appreciative of how we as law enforcement in this region come together. When any one of us is in need, from the day-to-day -day calls that might require more resources than normal, to the big ones that require an all-hands response. This includes those days when the unthinkable happens and we're rocked to the core when we lose one of our own. I'm also so pleased today that we've shown up here to honor our fallen. Thank you. On Monday of this week, I stood on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. and stood shoulder to shoulder with thousands of our brothers and sisters in blue during the candlelight vigil at the National Monument. They were from all over the world, and we also had many of the surviving family members of our fallen officers. We stood solemnly as the names of 138 fallen heroes from 2023 were read from those who died in the line of duty in the United States. This included the four heroes from Colorado that are here today. Serving in another role as the president of the Colorado Fallen Hero Foundation, I've had the opportunity to come to know the family members of three of these four fallen heroes. I was stood with uh, the mother of one of them in DC on Sunday night and were able to have some conversations about just how much our law enforcement family in Colorado has stepped up to support our fallen heroes. We do it every time, every year, and the families are blown away. You may not get to hear it often from them, but they expressed in tears just how much they're glad that if their loved one had to pay the ultimate sacrifice, that had happened here in Colorado. Speaking of showing up, when I was asked to come here today, I was asked to talk about sacrifice. I thought extensively on this because, as we know, in this profession, we do sacrifice a lot. We experience things and we miss things that people that aren't in this profession take for granted. We take on the toll of cumulative trauma and see things that nobody should. We also all know that our names could be on that wall in Washington, D.C., next to the 24,000 other brave heroes 
names that are inscribed there. What I find incredible is despite all of that, our law enforcement officers still show up every single day, 24-7, and sacrifice so much of themselves to protect our communities. Sometimes they even sacrifice their own lives for people that they've never met. If you please just think about that for a moment, what I just said. Our officers come to work and willingly agree to lay down their lives for people they've never met, and in some cases, people that may not even appreciate what they do. People often ask why we do this job. And thinking of examples of why we do this job, I was taken back to a time in 2012 when I worked at the Aurora Police Department. There was an awful night where many of us ran into a movie theater where a gunman had just murdered and shot dozens of people. When asked later about why an officer, one of the first officers that ran through that door, he was asked why he did that and what he was thinking. And very simply, he said, quote, there is nobody else. No one else is coming, it's just us, end quote. I still get goosebumps thinking about how impactful and selfless that statement is, and that's why we do what we do. If not us, then who? And the answer is that if we don't, no one else will. And with that commitment to duty comes sacrifice, but also a deep sense of pride, duty, and honor. That we are entrusted to be the ones who get to be there to bring order to chaos and calm to mayhem. To those here who have retired, those who, who still show up every day and night to continue to sacrifice so our communities are safe, thank you. To our professional staff who support us behind the scenes, our chaplains, thank you for allowing us to be able to go out and do the job with your support. And to the families and friends who support those of us who serve, thank you, as we know you also sacrifice a great deal to support your loved ones in blue. Mm -hmm. And to those who are survivors and keep on going despite the loss of your loved one, you have the respect of all of us, and we thank you for being an inspiration to us all. My hope is that someday we add no new names to that wall in D.C., but I know that's not realistic. We can, however, commit to never, ever forgetting the sacrifices of our fallen heroes in our own communities and throughout the world to keep us all safe. Please stay, stay, please stay safe and take care of yourselves and one another. Thank you. I share with you now the police officer's prayer. Lord, help me to serve and protect and uphold the laws of the land. Help me to keep the peace with courage and dignity and to use sound judgment in all situations. If force should be necessary, may it be in good conscience. Never let me forget the humanity in all people. When earthly justice sometimes fails, I know heavenly justice will prevail. Watch over me and my fellow officers as we work for the community's safety. Be my companion throughout the day and the long night watches. Put my loved one's worries to rest as you guide and protect me. May I honor my uniform by serving the community with courtesy and integrity. May I now invite Sheriff Johnson. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Curtis Johnson, and I have the privilege of being your Boulder County Sheriff. Before I begin, I want to thank the City of Longmont, and specifically Longmont Public Safety, for hosting this event for the 28th year. We, we very much appreciate being included. I also want to sincerely thank our chaplain team for putting this event together. And recently, we've had challenges in our organization, and the support that our chaplain team has given our staff and our employees has been incredible. And we appreciate everything you do for our organizations every day. I was asked to speak today about leaving a legacy. And when I thought about legacy, I struggled a little bit to really grasp what might be meaningful in this setting. Because I think too often people look at their legacy as how much money they leave behind, or how many possessions they have to give to their family. And sometimes their legacy is purely defined by how they died. 
not necessarily who they were when they were alive. So seeking some inspiration, I found a quote by a gentleman named Benjamin Disraeli that helped me. He said, the legacy of heroes is the memory of a great name and the inheritance of a great example. And those words resonated with me because as I think of our employees, our deputies and officers who serve our communities, they're heroes. And more often than not, the work that they do in our communities helps create our organizational legacy and their personal legacy. So seeking a little more inspiration, as Ashley Oliver gave me this topic, and she can take pride in stumping me a little bit, I stopped by a meeting yesterday of our peer support team. They were having a monthly check-in meeting. And I asked them, what does legacy mean to you? And the responses focused on words like how you remember, the impact you had on people, or the kindness you showed during your life. And then one particularly articulate dispatcher in the back of the room said to him, legacy was about how your life left an impression on others who follow you. I then realized that in our line of work, we have the opportunity to interact with so many different people in so many different ways, sometimes in good settings, other times in very difficult settings. And oftentimes we see people in situations that aren't comfortable for them, or maybe even for us, and we have a very limited amount of time to make an impression. So we must seize each chance we have with our community if we want to leave a legacy either personal or organizational, or both. We have to have good, meaningful interactions with the community, and we have to find ways to leave an impression on their heart. Everybody has the opportunity to leave a legacy. Some of us might remember someone right now who played a role in your life, who's left something behind for you that's a part of your legacy. That's the meaning of leaving a legacy setting an example for others to inherit. I'll close today with another quote that I think really speaks to the way we can leave a legacy on our peers, our co-workers, our community. It's a quote by Germany Kent, and it says, live your life in such a way that you'll be remembered for your kindness, compassion, fairness, character, benevolence, and a force for good who had much respect for life. Thank you for having me today. I appreciate being here, and I thank you all for joining us today. I'd like to read a poem called Deep Blue, written by Officer Rick Manick. Uh, her end of watch was on December 30th, 2021, um, right after uh, she actually wrote this poem, I believe. It says this, The color we bleed is that of deep blue. The blood that is shed is without asking for who. No time to be afraid, no time to cry. No choice in what we do, wherever we go, or when we die. The color we bleed is that of deep blue. Too often one will pay the ultimate price. Those who wear the uniform accept this sacrifice. Beyond the call of duty, one day might be mine. No regrets, sorrow, or fear as I walk the blue line. The color of lead is that of deep blue. In 1962, President John F. Kennedy signed a proclamation designating May 15th as National Peace Officers Memorial Day and the week in which that date falls as National Police Week. Today, May 15th, 2024, we honor the memory of these fallen officers. In 2023, 137 law enforcement officers nationwide, including four from Colorado, paid the ultimate sacrifice while serving their communities. May they rest in peace. These officers are now end of watch. Their dispatch is cleared.
Please stand for our closing benediction. And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with his favor and grant us his peace. Amen. This concludes our service, but we hope you'll stay for the reception that follows. Thank you, and God bless you all.